It's that time of year again. It is basketball time in Indiana. What's up, Hoosier Nation? And welcome to your 2019 Hoosier Hysteria tip-off show. I'm Sam Niederman. And I'm Tamar Scher. We're about to get you ready for the season with a look at IU men's and women's basketball here in the new Cuban Center virtual studio. Coming up for the second time in four years, Terry Morin led her squad back to the NCAA tournament. We'll catch up with Brenna Wise, who gives us a glimpse on what's in store for the Indiana women's basketball program. Plus, Indiana men's basketball adds a couple of key homegrown Hoosiers to the squad this season. Hear what Archie Miller said about newcomers Trace Jackson Davis and Joey Brunk. And later, we've got a look at some rocking games later on in the season. It's the Hoosier Hysteria tip-off show, and it starts right now. question mark facing Indiana women's basketball last season was who could possibly replace Hoosier legend Tyra Buss. Well, Indiana quickly found their answer in Allie Papberg. The crafty point guard took the Big Ten by storm and led IU as a floor general in 2019. Check this out. Papberg put up a team high 15 points while dishing out nearly five assists a game, earning her second team all Big Ten honors. Last season, the women raced out to a 10-0 start on the season on their way to a 21-13 overall record with impressive Big Ten wins over Michigan State and Iowa along the way. That performance landed them a bid in the 2019 NCAA tournament, marking their second appearance under Terry Morin, their first since 2016. The Cream and Crimson upset number seven seeded Texas 69 to 65 in the first round of the tournament before ending their run with a loss to the Oregon Ducks, who went on to reach the Final Four. Hoosiers had quite the dynamic duo leading the club last season. It was a combination of youth and experience. NBA lottery pick Romeo Langford and senior captain Jawan Morgan were the backbone of the squad. Langford led IU with 16 points a game, while Morgan delivered his trademark top-level effort, turning in 15 points and eight boards per night. Langford went on to be selected in the first round of the NBA draft by the Boston Celtics. How about this? Romeo was the 77th NBA draft selection in Indiana school history. Nobody in the Big Ten has more. IU found their stride at the right time. The Hoosiers finished 2019 strong, winning their final four regular season games. Archie Miller's second season in Bloomington featured a signature season sweep over the Big Ten champion Michigan State. IU went up to East Lansing and stunned Sparty in overtime before coming back home to Assembly Hall and doing it again in March. Justin Smith exploded for 24 points in the second game, while IU got it done on the defensive end of the floor, much like they did all season long. The Hoosiers finished in the nation's top 35 for defensive efficiency. Brenna Wise was one of Indiana's key contributors last season in her first year as a junior transfer. The versatile forward was able to fill in for former Hoosier star Amanda Cahill without missing a beat. It's time for our Hoosier Hysteria Player Spotlight. Sam Niederman caught up with Brenna last week to see what she's been up to this offseason. Sam Niederman here with Brenna Wise, Indiana women's basketball senior. Brenna, great to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Nice to see you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, we got the season right around the corner. It's been a long off season. How's it been to be practicing with the team and getting ready for what should be an exciting year? It's been great. We've been really getting after it, both on the court and the weight room, conditioning wise. Um, we are ready to elevate the bar from last year to this year and continue to progress, get better, and uh, get some dubs. You guys have a great core coming back for the five starters from a year ago returning. You, Ali Patberg, Jalen Penn, and then of course you've got Ben Duyaney once she gets healthy. What's it been like to grow with that group heading into another year on the court? Well, it's great to have four returners on the court. I mean, in practice, just to have those people lead drills and know what to expect, uh, set the tempo, set the expectations is nice, especially when you have six incoming freshmen as well as a transfer. Um, and just the chemistry that we have, it's really nice to know what one player likes and how to feed off of each other, and we know the system very well. So that experience is something that we can build upon and then elevate our game with that. Last 
and you guys got to the NCAA tournament, advanced to the second round. A big benchmark for this program. What did you guys learn from that experience? Um, honestly, I would say that I think last year it was great to get in, and that was what we were most excited about, but now that's an expectation here, as well as now it's time. Our goals are bigger and better to host, to win um, championships here and there. We have set the bar incredibly high, and it's very attainable and very achievable, but it starts with our work ethic. You went out and you performed really well last year, 12-6. and six. You had the big double-double against Iowa, 24-12. and 12. What do you look to build off of in your personal game this season? I just want to be the best player I can be because it's now or never at this point. I want to be um, kind of groomed in every area that I can, from a rebounding perspective, from a shooting perspective, from being able to defend both in the post and on the perimeter, um, just maximizing my game to the fullest potential because, as I said, it's now or never. Now, one of the areas of your game that has been so impressive is the free throw shooting. <laughs> I mean, 91% from the line last season. 109 makes and 119 tries. I mean, that's pretty darn good. How do you get to that point? Well, there was 10 misses in there, so it's <laughs> minimizing those 10 misses and just continuing with the repetition and the work ethic. Coach, coach stresses how important free throws are. We delegate um, an important amount of time in practice to focus on our free throws. So it's just capitalizing on, on those opportunities and uh, decreasing that 10. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it down this year. What's your uh, mental process like when you step up to the foul line? Um, I've been here before. It's to relax, to smile. My dad always says, you know, just go up there and smile. I mean, I've done this before. It's no different than the thousand I've shot previously in, in practice and therefore. So um, it's to relax and get up there and shoot it and get on to the next play. Let's take a look at Wise's stats from last season. She averaged 12 points and led the team with six rebounds a game. And as Sam and Brenna touched on, 91% from the line. Now let's dive into what can be expected from Terry Morin's team. You've already had a look at how the duo of Allie Papberg and Brenna Wise are set to lead Indiana's offense. Four starters from last year's NCAA tournament team are set to rep the Cream and Crimson this season. Jalen Penn is back after being named second team all Big Ten, posting 13 points per game while shooting 40% from the floor. Ben Duyaney chipped in nine points and four rebounds per contest last season and should supply more toughness for the Hoosiers both on the perimeter and on the glass. IU also adds Indiana Miss Basketball Jory Allen from Bedford North Lawrence. Allen is the fourth Indiana Miss Basketball to suit up for the Hoosiers following in the footsteps of current teammate Allie Papberg, who won the award while at Columbus North in 2015. Archie Miller's third season shows a lot of promise. Indiana features two Indianapolis area newcomers in Trace Jackson Davis and Joey Brunk. Jackson Davis is a McDonald's All-American from Center Grove, while Brunk transfers to IU from just up the road at Butler University. Coach Archie Miller is optimistic for both players fitting in. I mean, he's going to be put in the fire. He was brought here to be put in the fire, and he can help our team immensely. You know, I think you know, as you watch us play, he's got some confidence in him, and the more experience he gets under his belt, the, the better he'll be. Um, he's got to continue to work on his game. He's got to continue to evolve as a player. But he's going to get pushed, and he's going to get thrown in the fire, and he's going to have to earn it. But um, there's no better guy that, uh, you know, that, that to be around than him on a daily basis with how he approaches things. I think that's where Joey has been a great boost with his voice. Uh, his personality has really helped our workouts. He's helped our, our locker room. You know, just in general, you know, I think familiarity with each other, getting a little bit older with your with your younger guys, and then you know having some influx of some new new uh, some new energy. A guy like Joey can really help help the cause as well. IU returns prolific scorer Devontae Green in the backcourt, along with sophomore point guard Rob Fennessy. Green locked in from downtown last season, hitting 41% of his three-point shots. Fennessy is also back in Cream and Crimson after averaging six points and three assists a game as a freshman.
All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the women's schedule this season. The Hoosiers head down to the Virgin Islands for the 2019 Paradise Jam, taking on two of the sport's premier programs in South Carolina and Baylor. Of course, Carolina won the 2017 National Championship, while Baylor is coming off last season's dramatic national title win over Notre Dame. IU rings in the new year with Purdue on January 9th inside Assembly Hall. The Hoosiers blasted the Boilermakers by 22 points at home last season. Then Indiana makes a road trip up to Iowa City to take on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Of course, IU won in an upset last season against Iowa at home. through the men's schedule. No Duke or Carolina for IU in the Big Ten ACC Challenge this year. Instead, the Florida State Seminoles come to Bloomington on December 3rd for a 9 p.m. tip. The Hoosiers are set to square off with the Knolls for just the fifth time in school history. The 92 Hoosiers, led by Calbert Chaney and Damon Bailey, took down Florida State in the Sweet 16 thanks to Eric Anderson's 24 points off the bench. IU also features an in-state rival in Purdue. They play host to Purdue on February 8th. The Hoosiers close out the regular season with senior night on March 7th against the Wisconsin Badgers. That's a look at your Indiana men's and women's basketball programs for the upcoming year. We'll catch you at Assembly Hall this winter. The women open up on November 7th against Mount St. Mary's, while the men tip off with Western Illinois on November 5th. For tomorrow's share, I'm Sam Niederman. Talk to you next time, and go IU.